Hello, I'm Sean Langridge. I work in the Large Scale Structures Group here at ISIS, uh, which is a source of neutrons. And if you look around you, uh, in this most amazing building, we're in the second target station, the neutrons are produced over in the big cylindrical structure in the middle, and then they move round uh, to all of the instruments that you see here. Now, neutrons are incredibly useful particles. They're used in a wide range of uh, problems, which is useful to academic researchers, industrialists, and so on. And what I'd like to do today is to take you into three of the instruments that you see here. The orange one on the end, the purple one here, and finally the large green instrument. Maybe the first thing you can learn from that is you shouldn't allow scientists to choose the color of their instruments. Um, but this is where we are. So these instruments that you're looking at now are actually instruments that are optimized for studying materials that are on a nanometer length scale. OK, so we're now down on the experimental floor. And we're going to have a look in uh, our first instrument, which is the orange one at the end, imaginatively called Offspec, which stands for Off Specular. And this is a rather nice instrument because it's a, an example of collaboration between ourselves here at ISIS and our European partners from the Technical University in Delft in the Netherlands. The first thing that we need to get our uh, head around is, is, is what do we mean by a, a nanometer? Uh, because it's kind of a difficult concept. And so everybody has their favorite definition of what a nanometer is. Uh, a typical one is, say, uh, the thickness of a sheet of paper is something like 10,000 nanometers. But I like to think about it in, in, in terms of things like, uh, for example, the diameter of a uh, of the DNA double helix is about two nanometers. State-of-the-art transistors in a, in a chip are sort of 30 nanometers and so on. And I think uh, one of my particular favorites is I think your fingernails are supposed to grow at a nanometer uh, per second. So that's a feel for how small nanometers are. So what we're looking at here is an instrument uh, which is called a reflectometer. That's really easy. We're all familiar with reflection. Uh, so the classic example is if you see uh, some oil or say fuel on top of a liquid surface and you see all those beautiful colors that's basically reflection of light interfering which gives all those colors and from that you can tell how thick the layers are. That's with light so the structures are quite big they're typically hundreds of nanometers if not thousands. With neutrons because of the properties of the neutron we can actually shrink that length scale down to the nanometer. Okay and so the kind of structures that we study are actually structured on the 1 to 10 to 100 nanometer length scale. So the way this instrument works is the neutrons, if you remember the big blue cylinder, we can't see it now, uh, produced over there. They come flying down the beam line, and the first thing we do is to polarize them. Now, one of the properties of the neutron is that it behaves a, bit, a little bit like a bar magnet. So the first thing that we do is take this disorganized beam of neutrons, and we put them all into a single spin state. They then come into these regions of magnetic field, and just in the same way as when light goes into an optical prism, it splits. We can do that with neutrons, but with a magnetic field. So they split by a certain amount. They travel along the beam line, and then they interact with a sample. So here's a typical sample. In this case, it's, uh, it's a mirror. And what neutrons allow us to do is to study the thickness of those layers, what material they're made of, and the nature of the interfaces. And that's really important. We can then recombine those neutrons. So some of their spin like this, some of their spin like this. Recombine them and then analyze them, we can then work out what the structure is within our film. And that's been used in, in a whole uh, range of systems, trying to understand how biological systems, membranes organize themselves in rafts, how polymeric, poly, polymeric materials sorry, uh, organize themselves into little structures. And that's only possible on a nanometer length scale with an instrument like uh, we have here. This is the instrument that looks at, at layered structures which have some structure in the plane. So the next instrument we're going to look at is one that's particularly optimized for studying magnetic materials. So we're going to use some of the similar technology, but on a slightly different instrument. So let's go and have a look at that, and I'll try and explain to you what it does. So this is uh, Polref. This is the polarized beam instrument. So at the moment, you can see that the beam is on. So clearly, that would not be good for us to be inside there when the beam is on. So the first thing that we need to do is to close the shutter and get access to the blockhouse. That's quite straightforward. We have a control box here. We can set it off to close. And so now it's telling me that the shutter is closed. There's no radiation in the hutch. I can release the key, which then allows me to open the door. 
and we can go inside. So this is Polref, which is the instrument that's been set up uh, to look specifically at magnetic and superconducting materials. Now, magnetism actually underpins our lives in, in many ways. If we think about how we store information on our computer hard disks, it's all stored by and large at the moment by magnetism. And so we need to have tools that allow us to study materials that are magnetic but on nanoscale. So the neutrons are produced over in the blue target station. They come down, they're polarized in the same way as we do on off-spec. Neutrons come in, reflect off the surface. We have a series of slits here which tell us, uh, allow us to define the beam so we have a nice clean reflection. And then what this system does here is to allow us to analyze the, the spin of the neutron. So this, the neutron is a little dipole moment, little magnetic moment, and it can point in either up or down direction, say. And what this system does is using a series of mirrors is allow us to tell whether those neutrons are pointing up or pointing down. We then count the neutrons. You'll recognize this from the off-spec instrument. And by combining all that information, we can then work out what the magnetic structure is in that layer. So you can see we, we don't go in and have to cut the sample or polish it or do anything clever. We just measure it with a neutron beam, which allows us to get out the layered structure, but also determine how magnetic the materials are and which direction the magnetism is, is pointing in. And that's exactly what you have in, say, a hard disk, where you store information, but also in the read head, which is the little device that actually reads the information uh, off your hard disk. So, so they're all magnetic systems that we really want to understand. We can take samples where you take properties that are often antagonistic. So uh, properties like magnetism uh, and superconductivity, and we can test how they work. We close the door, I release the key. I can then put the key into the press here. This instrument is SANS 2D, and it's, uh, it uses a technique known as a small angle scattering of light, which is, is really straightforward. And if you ever looked at, say, uh, a coarse headlight on a foggy night, uh, and you see uh, a ring, rings of scattering, that's small angle scattering of light. But light has a much longer wavelength than neutrons, so those particles are much bigger. You're looking at the water droplets and the vapor. We have neutrons, so we can look at objects that are nanometer on length scale. And so what we're expecting to see, if we put a detector in the beam, we're expecting to see patterns that look like this. So you recognize the, the safety features that we've seen on the previous instrument. Neutrons arrive from the left, interact with the sample, and then behind us is this huge vacuum tank. At the moment, it's closed off with a safety shutter just to protect the window. When we take a measurement, all of this will be locked up, the shutter will open, and we'll allow neutrons into our detectors. So they'll come along here, go through the samples, the samples are hidden inside here, scatter out into a cone of scattering, which will be detected in our uh, two detectors in the tank. So what I'll do now is I see if I can find somebody to open the tank up for us. Actually, most of the shielding is not to stop neutrons getting out, it's to stop naturally occurring background in here getting in. So not only uh, do we have all the systems to protect, protect us from the neutrons? Obviously, we have a vacuum system in there, uh, so we need to make sure that we can't inadvertently open the door, pump it out uh, while there's somebody inside and so on. So we have a whole load of systems, and Sarah is now just essentially uh, going through the process that we've established to allow us to open the tank. Sarah, perhaps you... So this tank is normally vacuum, in the vacuum, so all the air is removed from it. It takes about 20 minutes to do that. So the neutrons come from the sapphire window at the front there, they travel this way. And so then we have one detector trolley at the front, two baffles which stop all the neutrons that rattle around in the tank, scattering randomly around. And then here is our main detector at the, back, at the rear. So this is a meter by meter square detector. It allows us to look at samples from a couple of nanometers out to hundreds of nanometers. And this, see the cadmium sort of circles in the middle? So there are beam stops. So actually what happens is a lot of the sample, rather than being scattered, it comes straight through the sample. And if that beam was to hit the detector straight on, the, the detector would be destroyed. So they're sort of a protection thing. Um, and they say they're made of cadmium, because although sapphire, so that window at the front, is really thick, sapphire is, is transparent to neutrons, but cadmium is the opposite. It really absorbs very strongly. So you need a very thin amount of cadmium to do the, to, to stop the direct beam damage in the detector. It's cool, man. Yeah, you like it? Yeah, it's like spacey. <laughs> yeah, so it goes about 12 meters back. So the minimum distance is a couple of meters all the way out to 12 meters. So if you want to look at small stuff, you push the detectors forward. 
If you want to look at big stuff, you push the detectors far away. No, it's pretty impressive, isn't it? I think it's, it's one of the things that, that always amazes me is that to study these materials on these ever shrinking lens scales. So we've talked about microns, we've shrunk that down to nanometers, and now we're talking about nanometer sized particles, uh, which you'll find in, in a wide range of applications. And to get down to those shorter and shorter lens scales, you need to make big, beautiful machines like Sans2D that, that you can see here.